Welcome to First United Methodist Church Richardson Online. I'm Rohini Drake, Director of Welcoming and Online Ministries at FEMCR, where we welcome people for Christ, grow people in Christ, and serve people with Christ. If you've worshiped with us before, you know that we encourage you to connect with us through text. And if you're here for the very first time, we want you to know that you're part of our church family. And as part of that family, we want to support, encourage, and pray for one another. We would love to pray for you or even celebrate with you. Text us at the number on your screen during the service or throughout the week to share a, a celebration or a prayer concern. As our fa online family continues to grow, we've recognized that many in our community are facing grief and loss. Help for Hurting Hearts is a class that provides practical information about the grief journey, including coping techniques and theories on grief. Participants will have the opportunity to share about the losses that they've experienced. Registration is open now, and the six-week class begins on Wednesday, August the 3rd at 7 p.m. Central on Zoom. Visit fumcr.com grief for more information and to register. Today, Pastor Scott continues our series called Encountering Jesus by sharing a life-changing encounter with Jesus from this passage in Mark 5, 25 through 34. Now hear these words. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She'd endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free oh, amazing Sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, 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 I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see it now. Oh, I can see. But 
Welcome to our Summer of Celebration for Children's Time. Many of you have already signed up to participate this summer, and you should be receiving your gifts in the mail. If this is the first you're hearing of FUMCR's Summer of Celebration, don't worry, you can still sign up to participate at the link on your screen. Whether you're on the road for vacation, at home, or maybe somewhere in between, we want all of our online families to join us this summer as we journey to learn important lessons about our faith and you'll get special surprises along the way. I'm excited for this next story for our summer journey through Bob Goff's Love Does book with you. Today's story is titled Disneyland. Well, Bob loves Disneyland. He loves it so much that he would go there every day if he could. He loves the characters, the rides, the cotton candy, the balloons, the festive crowds of people, and the Mickey Mouse ears. Bob loves many things about Disneyland, but his favorite part of the whole park is Tom Sawyer Island. Tom Sawyer Island is one place in Disneyland where there aren't any rides. It's just a place to run and jump and dream. Plus, it's got a pirate ship docked next to it. Who would like a place that comes with a pirate ship? Bob also loves Disneyland because of the whimsy and creativity that went into filling everything in the park with meaning. Even though it's a huge place, there are lots of little details like ropes, twinkly lights and mountains, and vanilla scented air that somehow makes you feel like you're in Switzerland and on a pirate ship and in outer space all at the same time. Did you know that Disneyland wasn't always a fun place to visit? On the first day the park opened, the water fountains didn't work. It was so hot that the asphalt in the street kept melting and women's shoes sunk right into the ground. The park ran out of food and some of the rides even broke down. Disneyland was supposed to be the happiest place on earth, but it was far from it. Walt Disney, the man who made the park, didn't give up. The park opened again the next day and the people running Disneyland fixed a few of the things that had gone wrong. 
They kept opening the park day by day, and it slowly grew into the amazing place that it is today. As he's grown up, Bob has found that a lot of the very best plans can turn out just like the opening day of Disneyland. He might make some mistakes, and things don't go as planned, and people might get upset. If Bob gave up after each failure, some of the most special things in his life wouldn't exist today. The same is true for each of you. If you give up too early, the people around you won't have the chance to see all that God can do through you. In the Bible, Jesus told the disciples that they would do greater things than Jesus did because his spirit would be in them. Jesus never said that things would be easy. He did promise that he would never leave his friends even if things go wrong. Jesus makes that same promises to us. Isn't that amazing? When you dream about what you want to do, don't be afraid that things may go wrong. Just remember that we are not our successes, nor our failures. God delights in our attempts, and he loves walking beside you when you try new things, even if it takes a few tries to get it right. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for always being right next to us. Thank you for walking with us when we try new and difficult things. We know that you will never leave us no matter what. Help us to share your love with others and remind each of us that we are a beautiful blessing. In your name we pray, amen. Hi, I'm Scott. I'm the associate pastor of online ministry here at FUMCR. We're so glad that you found us today on worship. And today we're gonna to be looking at that passage that was read by Rahini in Mark chapter five of this woman. And it's a powerful story of how God comes into our lives and we brush up against Jesus and we encounter him and there's life change and transformation. You know, God is that with for us, isn't he? God is a, a God of relationship, not only with us as a community of believers, but with us as individually. I wanna share with you just a, a, a story in my own life when I remember one of those first encounters with Jesus. See, I grew up in um, Chicago, I'm from the Midwest, so don't hold that against me. But I was um, going to church camp for that very first time in northern Wisconsin at Silver Birch Ranch. Um, for you that are listening, uh, maybe you've, you did the same thing, that you remember going to camps or remember going to places with your youth group, or, or maybe that's just completely foreign to you. But this is a place where we went, and I was exposed to nature and the lake and, and this community of friends right off the bat. I remember um, going through that week and just, it, it, there was something different about it. There was so, so something different about um, experiencing God and scripture in, these, in this place. You know, I grew up in a Christian family. I had parents that loved Jesus and, and loved me and my brothers. But there was just something different when I got home. I felt like I had encountered Jesus and I wanted to experience that over and over again, right? It, it's what we consider um, in Christian circles like that mountaintop, right? Um, and we, we want to have many mountaintop experiences, but really, truly, encountering Jesus is in all areas of our lives, right? It's in, a, it's in, a, in those mountaintop experiences like at, at camp or in a really great experience in a, in a, in a church environment or with other friends that, that see God the same way that we do. But it's also in those valleys, right? When we're struggling, when there's pain, when there's loss in our lives, encounters look very differently. And these encounters that we're looking at um, with Jesus, they do too look very differently. You know, one of the really wonderful things being about being a pastor is that I love to hear stories. I love to hear stories of how God is working in people's lives. And we would love to hear your story. As we continue to, to develop this relationship and, and grow in Christ together, may we share our stories. May we share how God is moving in our lives and how, God, how we're encountering God. And I, as I said before, is that these encounters look differently. For some of us, our encounters look differently at different parts of our lives. For instance, when we, um, there's times where we, are, we, we just need Jesus, right? And we are reaching out and we're clinging to him and we're chasing after him just to get a touch as we find here in our past today. And other times, Jesus is, um, our encounters with God are unexpected, Right? We're just going through our day, doing the things that we're trying to do and, and kind of not paying attention to how God is showing up. And all of a sudden we're in a conversation with somebody or something happens in our lives and, and we bump into Jesus, right? It's unintentional, but Jesus is there. And that, that's an encounter that marks us and transforms us as we move forward in this journey with God. 
And then there's these other encounters or what I would consider lack of encounter because we're so busy that we miss Jesus, that we're, that we're so prideful that we like, well, I don't need God in my life right now, or we're struggling through something and, and we're trying to do it on our own. We're not reaching out to God and we miss the opportunity for healing. And so these are the different types of, of encounters I think that we all experience in life. You know, life is hard and I'm not telling you anything different that you don't already know, right? We turn on the news, um, you look down your street at your neighbors or, or in this world that we find ourselves in, our world is broken, our world is hurting. But there's good news, my friends. There's good news found in scripture that God is willing to meet with us. God is willing to enter a relationship with us. And as we encounter God, there will be life transformation. Absolutely. See, there's a problem. I want to state this problem. It's this issue that we lack faith. We lack the faith and we lack the awareness and quite possibly the fortitude to really believe that when we encounter Jesus, that there'll be transformation. I want to say that one more time. We lack the faith, we lack the awareness and quite possibly the fortitude that when we encounter Jesus, that we will actually truly be healed, be transformed. I love that word fortitude. I had to look that word up really and kind of refresh my memory what that meant. But that word fortitude is courage in pain and adversity. Courage in pain and adversity. Another word would be grit, right? What is, what, what is grit? You know, it's like when things get tough, right? You pull on your boots, you get tough and you, you're like, I can do this. And we find here that in this passage in Mark chapter five, we find this woman who's been suffering for 12 years from this, from this, this pain, from this illness of bleeding, that she suffered a lot, right? But she has fortitude. She has fortitude and she's going to do something here. I need to give you a disclaimer right now as we dive into this passage. I'm not a woman. I'm not going to pretend I am or, or any of those things. I know that she has, has gone through lots in her life, right? And I, I can't quite identify with this, but we know that, 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 that there's a lot against her. First of all, it's first century, right? You know, the, 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 the rights that she had were very limited or, or actually at, not, not at all. She was, she was property. And this woman, she was afflicted with this pain, this illness for, for 12 years. She had spent everything that she had and nothing would relieve it. This illness would actually make her unclean in biblical law, right? In Levitical law, she was unclean, so she was an outcast. She was on the fringe of society. No one wanted anything to do with her. But she realized that she needed healing in her life. I love this, this, the, the, this healing, this encounter with Jesus, because it's what I consider the interrupting miracle, the interrupted miracle. Because it's actually, if you read the entire context of the chapter five, is that it's actually healing within another healing, right? She's suffering for 12 years of, of, this, of, of this illness of bleeding. But then there's this girl, Jairus' daughter, who's 12 years old, who's about to die, right? Jairus comes up to Jesus and says, come with me to my house. Be, I need you to heal my daughter. And so on the way to heal Jairus' daughter, this woman brushes up against Jesus, reaches out and touches Jesus, and is healed. I find it quite comical in the this, in this story as well, is because when, when this happens, when she reaches out and touches Jesus, he goes, who touched me? And the disciples said, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody touched you, you're in a crowd. But she, he knew that something mirac- miraculously had happened. So there's, there, there's some things I think we can learn from this passage. I think there's some things that we can learn from this woman and this encounter with Jesus. The first thing that we learn is that her faith, in her faith, she overcame fear. In Mark 5, 33, it says that faith penetrated fear. I'm, I want to read, read that to you one more time. It says, but the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth told him the whole truth. Think about that. She was the unclean woman. She was the woman that was outcasted by society. And she came in fear. And she reached out. She came in fear, despite her fear, 
It caused her to do something. The second thing is that her faith made her do something. She reached out. She chased after Jesus. She had heard about what Jesus was doing, right? She had heard about this, this, this prophet or this rabbi that was doing these miracles. And she knew that there was something special about him. So she ran after him. She took the risk of doing that. No matter what other people thought of her in society, she went out and did that. And she touched Jesus. In Mark, in verse 27, she touched his cloak. Touched his cloak. But was that, was that the, what made her heal? I think we need to read on further. But she touched her cloak, and this would have made Jesus unclean, right? She was unclean. Touching the rabbi would have made him unclean. But he spends time with her. He talks with her. Now this is, I love this part too, because she's the outcast. Jesus wanted to spend time on the fringes. Jesus spent time with those who are suffering. Jesus spent time with those who are ordinary. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm a very extraordinary or, 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 you know, or, di- or different person, right? That God wants to encounter you and I all the time. That he wants to spend time with us. He wants to encounter us so that we can have transformation and life in him. Micah 6.8 says this, What does the Lord require of you? but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. You know, this idea of doing justice, if we look at that, that, that Hebrew word, it's actually translated better as act justly. When we act justly, and that word is as, asa, which means to act. It's to do. So better said is that when we act justly, when we start doing, you know, when we start doing, we will love kindness and we walk humbly. There, there's, a, there's a responsibility on our part when we encounter Jesus. And I think that was, that's one, another thing that we learned from this passage is that, that Jesus wants to meet with us. Jesus wants to encounter us. But there's work on our part to be done too. And we, we find that here in this passage. And when we do that, our faith increases. Our faith increases, just as this woman did. And that's what happened to her. Her faith led her to healing, led her to healing. In the end of this passage, in verse 34, it says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. I love this because Jesus says, Daughter, to this unclean woman, daughter to this, this outcasted woman. Realize when, she, when he says this, he's saying that you're part of my kingdom, you're part of my family. And that's what Jesus is telling us. You're part of my family. You're my child. You're not an outcast. You're not on the fringe any longer. You're part of your center stage because you're important and you're valued. Do you see the love and the compassion that's coming out in Jesus? Here, that's some of the bravest things that we can do in life, right? Is to reach out, just as this woman did. To reach out and do something. To step out in faith and say, God, I need you now in this moment. Or God, I need to know what you need of me. Think about this. There's no secret formula in finding the divine. There's no secret formula in coming connected to Jesus. As I shared earlier is that, you know, I found God in nature, right? I found God in in Christian community, and that was so true. One of the things I I love being out in nature, I love going to the lake, I love going hiking, um, hooking up the RV and going camping. And maybe that's your thing. Or maybe you just love sitting on your back porch with a cup cup of coffee, reading your scriptures, in all these different ways we can encounter Jesus. And we need to be aware of those things. We need to be open to those things. I would love to hear your story. You know, this experiencing worship right online is a different thing, or it's been a thing that we've been experiencing in the last couple of years. As we continue to push into this, we encourage you to be in relationship with us. There, there are people that you can connect with on text, we would love to hear from, from you to know who you are and what, and, the, and what your story is. Where have you experienced Jesus? Where, where have you encountered Jesus in this last week? We would love to hear from you on those things. We would want to know what's happening. Because when we encounter Jesus, like this woman did, right? We realize that we become marked. We become marked, we become transformed, 
And then that causes us to go and do, to go and love, just as Jesus did, just as we're called to do, to act and to love. So go this week. Know that you're loved. Know that you're cared for. Know that you are a child of God. And Jesus is saying, daughter, son, you're mine. Experience God this week. Encounter the living and loving and resurrected Jesus Christ in your life this week. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us in worship today. If you were inspired by the service, we encourage you to like this video and subscribe to our FUMCR YouTube channel. If you'd like to support the mission and ministries of FUMCR, you can visit us online at fumcr.com slash give. We're grateful for every gift that helps us fulfill the mission here at FUMCR. Thank you again for joining us today in worship, and we pray that you have a joyful week.